Your Total Wine & More store is ready to serve you with our always low prices on an incredible 8,000 wines and 2,500 beers. Want it today? Try our same-day delivery or contactless curbside pickup at TotalWine.com. Whether you're grabbing your favorite beer or pouring a glass to enjoy an evening on the deck, Total Wine & More has you covered. Visit any of our 12 stores in Northern Virginia. Welcome to My Creative Corner 3, a podcast about quilting, crafting, creativity, and life in a northern town. You'll find show notes at mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. You can leave a comment. You can sign up for my patron site. You can purchase a virtual cup of coffee or even sign up for the newsletter. Come back weekly and we'll chat. My name is Vicki and welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome back friends. Yes, it is the 30th of June. We are rolling into the 4th of July weekend, and as my grandmother used to say, it's going to be hotter than a firecracker. You know, it really wasn't that long ago I was watching for frost in mid-June. Yes, it wasn't that long ago. And now it's going to be 90 degrees for the next week to week and a half with no rain in sight. So I guess I'm going to have to pay the city to water the plants that I have because I've had to move some. So let's just jump right into the saga of the property line. I think we are nearly done with dealing with our neighbor for the property line. After the trees were stumped out, um, that was pretty rough and uneven ground. They had a lot of dirt hauled in. And even though my husband was sick, there was a lot of people taking dirt because there was a lot brought in too much, in fact, on the crew that's been working. Now, remember, the crew is in their 80s. Literally, they're all octogenarians. And um, I was having much stress over trying to make sure that everything was going to go right and have enough material and not have to pay more money for a project that wasn't my um, making because my car broke down again and it had to be fixed. You know, there just comes a point during the pandemic where, you know, cash flow is an issue. So the bed, I think, is done. My husband, after hand shoveling one corner, because I can't do a lot of shoveling of that dirt, uh, he, he filled in a space behind a little stacked concrete wall and put fresh dirt on it. And I planted the fairy gardens there. It's going to be a two-story fairy garden. It's going to be an upgrade from the fairy gardens that were in the raised flower beds in the middle of the yard because the timbers rotted through after 20 years of being there. Um, so the fairy garden has relocated in a cute little shire. And that is been my decided theme for all of my garden. It's going to be the Shire. A little wildlife, a little meadow, a little sunshine, lots of trees, and being inspired by Lord of the Rings, which is my absolute favorite. And the lower level of the Shire has to have dirt pushed in it from the flower beds in the middle of the yard. And I think we will wait to plant the three Alberta spruce and two Arbor Vitae and one um, flowering crab that's going to be on the property line for where the garden is as a backdrop. And then I'm going to edit down some of the overgrown plants. Like, does anyone have any tips on getting rid of a perennial yellow primrose? I think an evening primrose or primrose is what it was called. Boy, that multiplied a lot. The rest of it I can lift and my husband's going to help lift. Um, we also have a tractor and for all of this project he bought a little blade so the irises will be made easy work of uh, because I can't chop them out and they've doubled in size. So a lot of thinning and editing, um, moving some of the flowers I had in a nursery bed, getting ready 
um, a couple years ago, they the bed they were in was edited down, and I think it'll be good to go. So right before I got to this point, and before the dirt was hauled in, I had reached the wall on it, and it was like looking at this barren wasteland and thinking, what are we going to be able to do with this? It is so ugly. The trees are gone. I missed them so much. They cut down a couple shrubs. They seem to be coming back. It's going to, you know, probably be another season or two. One's a snowflake bush in the corner. I would like to have it come up because it'll be a nice screen for that side of the yard where we're not going to plant the cedars and the um, Alberta, the dwarf size. Remember, they're not going to get huge. We don't want to have the problem again that we had um, Alberta spruce and it'll also leave us a little space for access to the backyard should we ever need to get the tractor up in there from across the parking lot that's behind our house or if we want to put a shed or something like that in the future. So that is the saga of the property line. It's going to take me the rest of the summer to get the planting the way I want and we're not going to put the trees in until it cools off again but I don't think we should wait till September because it can start getting really cold and frost and I, I want the trees to have a few weeks to establish before winter hits and before the nursery shuts down quite honestly so so that's the plan uh, most of the work I have left is emotional work of getting over um, and reining myself in on being so, so upset about it. You know, I got thinking about that. Why am I so upset about it? Well, number one, it was a natural green screen and privacy. Now I feel like I'm in a fishbowl in my house. I have a very exposed front yard, which is on a very busy street. Now I have this parking lot. Now, the good news is currently there isn't a whole lot going on because school is not in session and they haven't been meeting in person for months. Hence why the cleanup started when it did. But it was like, you know, the culmination of the whole pandemic. And I, I put all my focus on that. Uh, I was disrespected and I was treated, I think, um, a little bit poorly. I'm dealing with a man of a different generation who wants to talk to my husband all the time, which upset me. But at the same time, um, I needed to get over fueling the fire and just kind of putting it behind us and it is what it is the job needed to be done because all of the trees on their side of the property line were wind damaged from a storm and I looked it up it was in 2018 that that um, storm came through broke off a whole bunch of trees some of the other tall cedars were dying because of drought um, we had cut the ones on our property down but it just it's just one of those things that needed to be done and there also needed to be a cooperative effort made to come to some resolution. Uh, my husband is much more diplomatic about these things. Um, I would have taken all of the dirt because there's too much and I would have hoarded it and I would, would have wanted to put it in other places and we still might if they have way too much um, because we have some ruts on the side of our driveway from snow blowing and from having our roof redone same year as the storm. So you know, it's just, I need to be a kinder, gentler person. But see, part of the issue is I'm a kinder, gentler person all day at work. And then you're a kinder, gentler person all day with the public. And then you're going to have the end of the day, you just want things to be real. And I think that was part of it. There just comes a point where taking the high road all the time and yet, not being run roughshod over and acknowledging your feelings about it, but not fueling the fire to make the feelings to be larger than the response needed to the situation, if that makes sense. Anyway, most of my um, irritability has seemed to re resolved over it since we've got the dirt in place and we're not feeling pressured. I'm not having people knock on my door every two seconds asking, can I plug into your electric? Can I, you know, get some water to water our grassy? Can I do this? What are we going to do with that? Um, you know, and 
there were a few things said that I, I took offense to that were kind of insulting, but I'm dealing with an 80 year old man who has a broken filtration system on his brain. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. So anyway, the garden is done. The fairy garden is the bones of it is in place. I'm going to set the houses back into their new location with a couple of the fairies and the swings and the hedgehogs and the shire um, feel is going to be there. I also have little garden doors that will go along the brick wall and you know concrete stacked wall not brick wall and maybe a couple trees and you know that's going to keep growing and make it a beautiful place. We have that beautiful bird bath with the fountain in the center and that's going to go in the main garden especially uh, since we're going to kind of elongate it but make it a little thinner and then have a I have a blue gazing ball it's blown glass and it glows in the dark and looks like the galaxy so there's a lot of magic that will be happening in there and the good news is that's what gardening's about right it's a process not an event much like quilt making <laughs> so I've learned a lot of lessons this summer in patience and um, in emotional patients as well as pacing myself. So what have I done crafty wise? Yep, there's a little few crickets there, right? I've made a couple Dear Jane blocks. My goal is to make about one a week. I am gearing up for the so along on the My Creative Corner 3 Facebook group and we will be announcing the details of that the name of it will be launched soon we're working on how to put it together and I say we because it's a collaborative quilt along so along with halo inspiration so angel is going to be doing a lot of the education online with her weekly Facebook groups um, we're going to start the quilt and go all the way through and show you how um, you can put it together as well as some finishing options and ways to personalize this quilt along the way. Ooh, a little bit of teaser there. I'm going to give you that much. So go and check out Halo Inspiration's Facebook page. They also have a group called Halo's Creative Kingdom. And you'll be weekly given updates. I'm going to send a newsletter out. Shock and awe. I'm going to send out a newsletter haven't done it in months and I'm going to use the newsletter as a way to announce these kinds of things remind people give links all of that kind of stuff so if you're not signed up for the newsletter you might want to go to mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com that's my um, blog and website and I have another uh, quilt along. It's probably a simpler version of using orphan blocks in the fall. So if you want more information on those things, sign up so that you don't miss out on that kind of fun group things as well as building our community. I'm also launching the Kinship 100 Days 100 Blocks event in my house this weekend because July 1st is when it all begins. So I have counted through last year. Uh, I didn't quite do 100 blocks in 100 days. I think I did 11. And I knew that I wasn't going to get all of them done because, you know, life happened and I overcommitted myself. And this year is busy, but since I'm working from home, I'm able to pace myself a little bit better. I have really worked on getting the customer quilts I have done and more keep coming so pacing myself on that kind of thing and so the whole thing is if you do a block a day over 100 days you'll have the quilt done and I thought well if I do several blocks a week I'm going to be a lot further ahead than I was last year and if I can keep the ball rolling on it I will and still do maybe a my goal, remember, is one Dear Jane block a week. I'm not in any hurry to get that done. You have to take your time with that quilt, which means picking it up, putting it down. You have to be in the right mindset to work on those tricky little blocks. And then, you know, some easy peasy projects in between. The other thing I'm working on is quilting wise is hand stitching my hexagons. And I'm getting to, I think, almost done 
with the third row and the fourth row is the last row. And I'm researching how to applique it or float it on top of a quilt sandwich. I'm not sure what method I'm going to do, but I'm going to just jump in the end, deep into the pool and try it. I'm excited to pull out hexagons I got, I don't know if it was last year or so, in a um, Instagram exchange. And they were bee themed. So all of the little hexagons are have bees, honeybees, bumblebees, beehives, all kinds of things. So during the summer, I want to get those out and just sew them together randomly and make a piece of little tiny, it's not tons, it's not going to be huge, you know, make a small um, table runner or mug rug or something. I haven't figured out how many, I haven't pulled them out in a while to see how many hexagons I have, but I also have extra fabric to make it bigger or to use that in the design somehow. The thing about Engl English paper piecing is it reminded me why I started quilting in the first place. Quilting was not about sewing and piecing. In, fa in fact, I vowed from the beginning after a couple of failed attempts on a secondhand sewing machine that was not running right, that I was never going to piece again, that I was only going to do cheater quilts and whole cloth quilts um, by hand because I didn't have the long arm back then either because I liked the stitching. I mean, embroidery, I had done tons of embroidery and cross stitch and I just, as, much, as beautiful as that medium is, I got to a point, what else do you make with it? And I had embroidered pillowcases and pictures and pillows and little details on, you know, like my daughter's little baby clothes and things like that. Same with tatting. I mean, there's limitations on how much you can do because I wasn't obsessed by them. I didn't get bit by the bug by them. And I liked the handwork of hand quilting. It was slow. It was steady. It was rhythmic. It was very zen. And as I got older, I didn't have a lot of time with my children being older. The other part is um, my fingers just, just really can't do that kind of rocking of a tiny needle to achieve the stitches that I was looking for. So that's when I graduated eventually to long arming. But my friend showed me, it was, it was right around 2000, 99, 2000, this newfangled thing called a rotary cutter and a mat which I was not using that before um, because the only success I had had was using templates and hand sewing and I tried the machine sewing and that's when I really got frustrated because templates you know are very difficult for me to trace them and then cut them out accurately so that is really what's made piecing become more of a friendship with me versus an enemy. And um, I just really think back upon that. And I remember throwing a couple tops away, pulling them out of the trash, you know, because it was in my craft room, not the kitchen garbage. And I remember just telling my mom how many times that I hated piecing so much. I didn't understand why anybody liked piecing. Now, I have to say, I'd piece now because I enjoy the creative outlet of designing your own patterns and your own um, quilts and doing that kind of stuff. But my first love in quilting is still the quilting part. And I love that even more with the long arm because you can go fast and you can make all kinds of detailed stitches in it. It's amazing how much you can do in just a few minutes. So that's just where I got stuck on the piecing. And so why I even decided that Dear Jane during COVID was because it was a challenge. Every time I started noticing that my piecing is getting poor or I just felt like I was forgetting everything I had learned because I hadn't tried anything challenging or the other part is if I do improv too much for too long, there's not a lot of practice on accuracy. So the thing about the Dear Jane is that you paper piece, foundation paper piece, I've done traditional piecing with it and I'm, there's also English paper piecing options, which I probably will do. 
And that's also where I'm at with kinship. These are small little blocks that I'm going to start working on um, maybe tomorrow to post for July 1st. Is there small, I believe they're five or six inch squares and then half of that block. Um, I think they're three by six rectangles. It's really a beautiful quilt that Gnome Angel has designed. You can traditionally piece them. There's directions in the book on how to cut each piece out. And there's also a foundation paper piecing, which I purchased that particular um, pattern set. So what's really nice is you have options on it. Now this quilt, Kinship, is a little simpler than Dear Jane. And it will give me some opportunity to practice and to keep my skills up on piecing. You know, just sometimes you need a challenge because if you don't, um, you kind of lose your skills. So I have to blend the easy stuff, the medium stuff, and the hard stuff. <laughs> I really, really do because I get bored. But then if you do everything that's um, on the high level of challenge, I get overwhelmed. And so I like having things that you can pull out and then put away. And I'm all right with the fact that kinship has already been started for a year and dear Jane is going to be years, plural, from start to finish, especially if I decide to do those pieced triangles on the border. That's all right. Slow stitching is fun. Slow stitching also um, gives me more space in my house because I'm not always creating a whole bunch of quilts all the time. But it's also fun to do things that are like the challenge coming up that's going to be fun, lighthearted, and bust up some of that stash, especially strips that you have in your house. If you're like me, you got a lot of scraps and stash. So can I sh share a silly yet exciting thing that I am over the moon for today? In my part of Michigan, gyms and salons have been open for several weeks. So my husband's been going to the gym. Good for him. I'm not ready to go that public. I'm still staying at home um, most of the time, social distancing. I've been to the store a couple times. I'm wearing a mask wherever I go. I don't care whatever other people do. But this morning is my haircut appointment. I have not had my haircut since that short haircut that I had done in February. I am sick of this hair. The, it's, it's shoulder length again. It's gotten really curly with the summer humidity, which is fine, except to really look its best, I can't put all the product in my hair because then I get an itchy, yucky scalp. And so I'm cutting it short. Hopefully she'll go as short. I may even go as short as a pixie because I don't know how long it'll be before I can get my hair cut again because signs across the nation and in pockets of Michigan and even up north, the coronavirus is still out there and cases are still being um, confirmed and they're rising hotspots throughout the state as well as our country. So here in the United States, um, it's it's been wild on it. Um, so I never thought I would be a homebody because I'm usually go all the time, hyperactive, got to get things done, got to go places. And now I am focusing on my projects and not going much anywhere. It's been a much simpler, less complicated summer. I'm missing the family that we have in Michigan and I'd like to see them someday when it's safe to go. And where they live, we have to travel through hot spots or they live in and around hot spots. So we're not traveling. We're social distancing. I'm still mask wearing. Um, and I'm cutting this hair off. Oh my goodness, it's so thick. And it's just hot and it looks bad. So once I get my hair cut, I'm going to start doing YouTube videos with this computer. I've played around with different programs. Um, I'm learning and I just got sick of how I looked with my messy hair in <laughs> the videos. And so, um, yeah, you can look for that to be coming up soon. I'm just really, really excited because it's, it's time for this mop of hair to come off. I have not colored my hair much ever. Once in a while I did a rinse, but I am not doing color. I just don't want to commit to it. Um, but someday when I am 
rich and famous, as my grandma used to say, uh, retired and probably have more time is really more <laughs> like it. I want to color it in that oil slick color, but not, not today because I can't maintain it. And there's no, um, guarantee that I can get back to the salon to maintain that much of a high, high maintenance hair color as well as hairdo so my hair actually my husband commented um hasn't grayed much as it's grown out it, when my hair gets longer the grays show more and it's it's i have to say i'm pretty happy that the the grays aren't aren't piling in as much stress as i've felt over the last few months and um so that is the big exciting thing for the day haircut and what's so cool is the salon is basically across the street from me and down an alley and uh, since my car's broke down i can feel um very special that i'll just walk down there and I don't know what it is about walking in your neighborhood and walking to the little businesses. I could walk to the quilt shop on the way home because it's all right in my little part of my town. So just want to say that I have been enjoying nature rides. I've been enjoying staying in my little part of my town, which is a small town, but I live, um, a few miles from the interstate that brings all the tourists north and south. I got surprised on Sunday when I drove my car, which has been a rare thing, to the mechanic. And I saw the traffic jam went back for a couple miles <laughs> to get to the um, interstate to for people to go home. Um, I've just kind of been in this little bubble thinking that, oh, everybody must just be staying home. I don't see them. You know, the weekends in my neighborhood you, during the week tend to be quiet right now. Um, what a false sense of reality. Because when you go to the grocery store or you go to, because we have to cross um, the interstate to get to most of the stores. That's where all the people are. And there's a lot of them. And lots of people are moving around and traveling. Yet we are opting not to do that. Especially since a couple of weeks ago, I was sick. My husband currently isn't feeling great. And, you know, it's not coronavirus. It's just your run of the mill stuff. But no, we're not spreading that around to our family and friends and our co-workers and our, the people that we work for because we both work in, a, in jobs where we deal with customers or patients. And, you know, hey, we're keeping that stuff to ourselves. So I want to remind everyone that if you want to leave a comment, do, do so on the blog, which is mycreativecorner3.wordpress.com. The newsletter um, is accessed there. Um, it'll pop up if you've never signed up for it before on the web page. But you can access across the top. There are other um, pages that you can click on the link. The other thing is if you enjoy the podcast, you can buy me a virtual cup of coffee. And you can see that on the web page as well as my um patron program. Um, if you want to support the podcast every month, rather than buying merch or um, running tons of ads, which I know some people will hear a few ads here and there, um, I'm opting to really work on having a patron program, which will help keep the cost of maintaining the blog and doing my podcast to everybody else as a ad-free program. Boy, I, that got awkward quick, didn't it? See, when you talk about Patreon and stuff, I feel awkward about it. But the bottom line is this. If you want to support the podcast, you have one-time donation opportunities and you also have the Patreon program. Patrons get perks this year. I've really worked on doing many different things. Last month, my patrons got a free pattern. Um, months before that, they had an extra content podcast. Um, in the fall, there may be a little zine that they'll get for free with a few recipes and maybe little stories and, and a little simple pattern or a master uh, foundation paper piece type of pattern. I don't know. See, I'm thinking about that stuff all the time. And that kind of... Uh, content will go to the patrons and I really appreciate those who are my patrons and have been loyal and supporting the podcast all this time that we have been together. The other um, thing is 
don't forget that you don't have to support me with financial um, con contributions, resources, funding, however. Just tell your friends about the podcast. Share it on your social media. Share it on groups that you're in or Facebook or Instagram. And that kind of support, as well as commenting on some of the social media posts that I make, help other people find the podcast, which helps immensely. I want to thank you for listening. Thanks for following the saga of the property line. And I'm working on a video um, when it's all said and done, which might take most of the summer. That'll go from kind of the telling of the story from start to finish in a few minutes. Um, you can see it. And that will be an interesting adventure for me in learning how to put a video together with lots of different clips and photos. So everybody have a most wonderful week. I hope that if you're in a heat wave like we are, stay cool, um, drink a lot of water, and find that simple project that brings you joy and peace. Stay, stay safe and be creative. And I want to hope that everybody can leave some comments or if you're not comfortable in leaving a public comment, feel free to email me at vholloway12345 at gmail.com. Have a most wonderful week, everyone. Quilt on! today are like little cities full of different interneting boroughs like the entertainment district in the living room or the virtual fitness center in the garage and xfinity internet keeps it all running smoothly with reliable speed to power all your devices at once you get coverage around town from the financial district home office to the spa xfinity internet keeps your little city humming with reliable speed and coverage now that's simple easy awesome find great offers and value today from xfinity go online or call 1-800-XFINITY to learn more restrictions apply your Total Wine & More store is ready to serve you with our always low prices on an incredible 8,000 wines and 2,500 beers. Want it today? Try our same-day delivery or contactless curbside pickup at TotalWine.com. Whether you're grabbing your favorite beer or pouring a glass to enjoy an evening on the deck, Total Wine & More has you covered. Visit any of our 12 stores in Northern Virginia, 